Hello everyone and welcome to yet another Keyshot Quick Tip. Today what we're going to be doing is talking about how to precisely position text on the sidewalls of tires. Uh, this doesn't only apply to tires. Uh, there are, are several examples uh, that you could also apply this to. Basically any time that you need to precisely position uh, a texture somewhere on your model, uh, this technique will work for you. I have this model here that I was able to download from grabcad.com. It's a great site to download free models uh, in case you want to practice your rendering on a particular model type that you don't have in your inventory. So a great place to uh, go for that. So uh, first step here, let's go ahead and zoom in on our tire. And to make things uh, move a little faster while I'm working and positioning things here, I'm going to go ahead and press Alt P and that's going to put a key shot into performance mode and that will improve my performance as I'm positioning my camera. And what I'd like to do here is frame this tire so it fills up a good portion of the real-time window and I'm going to save this out and the reason we're doing that is we're going to use this as reference for placing our, our text. Okay. And I'm just positioning this so that I get is a nice flat on view here. And now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and press print screen and I'm going to save out this image. Uh, the quality uh, isn't too imperative here. You don't need a very high res render uh, for what we're going to do. And now I'll pause the interface so that we can go into Photoshop and do some work. So I'll do that by pressing shift P. Uh, that stops the rendering process and freeze up my processors uh, so I can go work in Photoshop. Now I'll go File, New, and I'll go ahead and paste that image. And the next thing I'm going to do is crop in on it so that all we have left is the tire. Okay. And I'll just get a nice closed-in shot here. And let's press OK. All right, next thing we want to do is go ahead and create an image uh, to actually create our texture. And so I'll go File, New, and I'll make this 2048 by 2048. Uh, Keyshot is great in terms of performance and dealing with high res textures. So you don't need to be shy. Uh, when creating your textures. You can use a very high resolution and you won't notice a hit in performance, even if you're working on a simple computer such as a laptop, which uh, I'm using in this particular case. Um, so let's go ahead and find the center of this document here. And I'm going to do that by going to the View menu and I'm going to make sure Snap to Document Bounds is checked. And since I have these rulers shown, this will allow me to drag guides out from those. If your rulers aren't shown, you can bring them up by going to the View menu and making sure rulers is checked. Uh, since mine are shown, I'm just going to grab my arrow selection tool here and I'm going to click on the top row of rulers and drag. And as I get to the center, this is going to snap and that uh, lets me know that I'm right in the center of the document vertically. And let's find the center of the document horizontally. So there, it just snapped. That's the exact center of this particular document. So now I'll drag this tire over in here and I'm going to position it as close to the being in the center of that as I can. And the next thing I'm going to do is press Control T. This pulls up the free transform mode so we can scale this up. And I'm going to do that by pressing Alt and Shift. That would be Option Shift on the Mac. And I'm going to start to scale this up by clicking in the top right square here and dragging that up. Uh, holding Alt Shift ensures that it scales up from the center. Now the pixelation isn't going to matter here. Uh, all we're doing is using this as reference to position our text. And I'm going to try and make sure that it's right there in the center. Now that we have that, let's go to our layers. And also I'm going to pull up the paths window. Because we're going to be using those to uh, type our text in a radial fashion. And I'm going to grab the Ellipse tool from the Tools palette. And the Ellipse tool has certain parameters. 
It can either draw ellipses as pixels or it can draw them as paths. What we need are the paths. So since I have that selected, I'm going to hover right over the center of that image. I'm going to hold Alt and Shift again and click and drag. Holding that Alt and Shift, again, uh, make sure that it draws these th this uh, ellipse out from the center. And now that we have our work path, I'm going to go ahead and select the Type tool. And I'm going to click on the path and create some text. So I'll type in, let's do Luxion. Luxion. And if your text isn't exactly centered, you can reposition that by holding Control. And you see that little circle there? If you click, that's actually, there was an X behind that. And if you click on that X and drag, uh, that lets you specify where the text starts when you're typing along a path. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now, the other thing you can do if you wanted the text to appear on the inside of the circle is you can click and drag in there and it will position it on the inside. But in this case, we want it on the outside. And let's grab our type tool again and we'll hover down here. Do need to make sure our work path is active. So this was our original path. And let's hover down here and we'll type in key shot. Okay. Again, it looks like we need to position this. It's not quite where I want it to be. So I'll hold control and click and start to shift this text. And there we go. I think I'll uh, select this layer Maybe drop the uh, text down a little bit with the arrows. It looks like it was intersecting the rim a little bit there. And I'll also go ahead and do that with the Luxion. All right. So now it's time to save this out so we can use it as our texture. Uh, the first step in that process is to hide the other layers. And now we see this checker pattern back here. This indicates that we have transparency, which is good. Uh, we don't want any color behind the text. Uh, that way when we map this onto the tire, uh, we don't have any borders on this texture. We'll see the actual tire material uh, wherever the, the text uh, doesn't show. So let's save this out. And I'm going to save this out as a PNG. And the reason I'm doing this as a PNG is because uh, that saves me a step in having to create an alpha channel. PNGs will automatically save with transparency call this tire texture and let's press OK and let's hop back into Keyshot. So I will unpause the interface here by pressing Shift P and let's double click on the tire to pull up the material parameters. So under the texture tab I'm going to go ahead and load in our texture and there it is tire texture.png and nothing happened. Why is that? Uh, the reason is, is because our projection mode is set to UV coordinates. This particular model does not have those UV coordinates. And if you're not sure if your model has them or not, uh, more than likely it does not. Uh, UV coordinates are a precise way of positioning uh, textures. And they have to be set up manually. So if you're not sure if they have them, like I said, more than likely uh, they don't. But Keyshot has some automatic uh, texture projecting projection modes. And in this particular case, uh, I'm going to use one of the planar modes. If you are positioning something like text uh, specifically on a, on a single surface, more than likely you'll want to use one of the planar modes. And in this case, I know it happens to be planar Y, uh, since I've already done this. And I'll click planar Y. And you can see uh, there's some text there. So. The next thing I'm going to do is click on this position button and as I click and drag it's going to start to move this texture around. And what I need to be able to do is uh, position it directly in the center where the hub is but since the tire material doesn't occupy this space I, I can't click on it. So I'll show you how to get around that. First thing I do want to do though is turn off repeat. Uh, we only want this texture to be repeated once. Uh, here is the key shot, and what I'm going to do is use the sliders here, Shift, U, and V, uh, to position this. And so I'll grab the V slider, just going to shift things vertically. And 
let's get the Luxion positioned near the top. And let's grab the U and start to slide this out further. Okay, we're pretty close to centered on the tire there. Uh, the next thing I need to do, it looks like the scale is a bit off. So we do have our scale sliders here, scale U and V. And let's start to increase that. Okay. And let's grab our vertical slider. And start to shift things. Uh, now it may get to a point where you'll want to type in values manually. Uh, so you can make some very subtle adjustments. So for example, here on, on shift V, uh, I'll type in one negative 1.62 and let's see what that gives us. Looks like we need to go negative 1.58 or 5.9. And we can even do a third decimal place. So let's try 5.95, 5.98. That's pretty good. It looks like even still we might want to scale this up a bit. So for scale U and V, let's type in a little higher value there. All right. And let's also shift this horizontally. Let's try negative 2.67. Let's try negative 2.69. And let's also increase our scale just a little bit. So let's try one five seven. Let's try one six one six five. All right. Looks like we could benefit from a little uh, higher positioning on the. Uh, Shift V, so let's try negative Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that positioning there. And like I said, this uh, isn't a technique that applies strictly to sidewalls on tires. Uh, basically, any part of your model that you need to precisely position a texture, such as text or a logo or something along those lines, you can use this same technique. Uh, now, the nice thing about applying uh, things like this as a texture as opposed to a label is they'll actually take on the material parameters. So the specularity and roughness that I have set on this tire, uh, this texture will actually also take on those parameters. Uh, if the texture is a bit overexposed and bright, which in this case I think I'd like to tone that down a bit, I can use the intensity slider here and start to knock that back. So I don't have a, a perfectly white uh, you know, texture there. All right, so that's a quick look at uh, positioning textures on sidewalls.